Hey guys, how you doing and welcome to this custom battle on Third Age Total War. And I would say to you, if you haven't already, get yourself a woolly jumper on because this could be quite a cold affair as we are way up in the mountains here, the misty mountains to be exact. And I'm super happy to be bringing you this battle today because this was sent over to me by one of my subscribers who I didn't ask him to do so, but he sent it over to me and it's quite apt that he did do so because that is something I'm looking to bring more to the channel and that is sort of custom battle replays that you guys have fought, epic encounters. It's a great way to get you more involved in my videos and to share those epic, epic clashes with me so I can then commentate on them. So yes, if you've got any that you know you've played recently or you're going to be playing over the next few weeks, send them over to me, email them over to me. There's a link down below in the description to my email address. And yeah, then get them sent over to me as quick as you can because I'd love to commentate on them. Um, I will be bringing out a video in the next few weeks going into detail about what exactly I'm looking for and how you can send me the replays over um, in the future. And an email address I'll be setting up for it and things like that. So I'll go into a lot more detail about how exactly I want them to be done in the future. That video will probably be out in a few weeks' time. So do stay tuned for that. But let's crack on with this video today. So the situation is, the scenario is, we've got three armies of the Orcs of the Misty Mountains. I'll go through the player comps and their names in a second. And we've got two defending armies of the Dwarves and they are defending the Misty, Misty Mountains today. And the Orcs are trying to basically drive them away from their lands. But we know how capable these stout stubborn bastards of the dwarves are they can really hold their ground for a long period of time you can see here how high up the mountains they are they're going to be really tricky to break down okay the orcs have got three armies and the dwarves have only got two but the fact that they are so awesome at defending and the, ter and the terrain that they've got at their disposal could really play in their hands today so let's quickly look as i say at the army comms before we do get going for this clash of titans today so at the back here at the back we've got Brilli 24 there we go so if the Yorks have pretty much brought similar builds here because they, they need to if they're going to try and break down these dwarves they've got to bring builds that are going to do an effective job heavy infantry uh, you know cave trolls and things like that so we'll quickly look at them but they are very similar so we've got uh, a lot of heavy infantry heavy goblin halberds here definitely required for this one today we've got some where are they now a lot of those halberds actually heavy heavy heavy, <laughs> heavy goblin infantry here we've got some catapult crew there at the back we've got where are they yes here we are heavy goblin archers we've got um, some cave trolls I believe the maximum each army could bring in terms of trolls was two I don't know if they all brought two, but the maximum they could bring was two. So yeah, they've got some goblin infantry, heavy infantry units here. So these definitely need to be brought. Heavy melee units that can try and smash down, or are capable of smashing down the dwarven lines, because that's the only way they're going to get victory here today. Any chance they're going to be able to break them down, essentially. So that's there. That's bloody 24. And then we're getting on to Donuts. Mm, that's his name. I love it. Donuts. Mm, I wonder if today, if they do get victory today, the Orcs, will they be having donuts for tea? That may be the prize. That may be the incentive that these guys need to win. It's a nice box of, you know, donuts. I don't know, but that could be the case. So we've got yeah, a lot of again halberds here, heavy infantry at his disposal, goblin archers, heavy goblin archers at the back there. Yeah, he's got to bring them. Some warg riders at the back here. That, I think that's Buddy 24's. Yeah, that's Buddy 24's uh, units there. Some warg riders. And yeah, a nice composition there from Donuts. I'm just going to go Donuts. I'm not going to go going mm, all the time. We'll be here all day. Uh, yeah, there's, there's his unit of cave trolls. They have a cave troll. And then over here, the third army of the orcs is commanded by Fluffalo. And he's a chap who sent over the replay to me, so a big thank you to him. And he's got some cave trolls as well. And again, heavy infantry at his disposal. At the back there, that is Fluffalo. Yes, he has got some more units. He's sort of got a thin line going up the mountain here. I mean, as well, the fact, 
you know, okay, they have more in numbers, but they've got to traverse up the mountain to get to the to, to, to the dwarves. I can get my words out in a second. So, you know, they're going to be fatigued as well. So things, factors aren't going to play into their hands. The dwarves seem to have the upper hand already, I feel, with this one. So going over to the dwarven factions here on the mountainside, this dwarven army is going to try and push over to meet up with the defending army over there on the cliff side his his comrades in effect so here we go so we've got some vault wardens this guy's commanding is trib gibbon trim gibbon and yeah some vault wardens some guards of Kazadum. some vault wardens there some axemen of erebor some heavy stout defenders as i say some very pike heavy pike units here iron crossbowmen iron guard so he's desperately trying to get his units across to meet up with the his comrade over there to defend the hillside or the mountainside together. Much more capable of defending them together as opposed to separately. He's also got some Dale cavalry that's trying to push out against the warg riders of Fluffalo over here. So they may have a little bit of a clash in a second, but we'll get going in a minute. And then over here, very quickly, on this steep mountainside, as I say, we've got T3MPO. Dot X Ghost. I mean, that name just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> it's such a, a beautiful name. It rolls off the uh, the mouth there, doesn't it? <laughs> Not. But no, a great name. Very very inventive. So he's got some ca ca sorry, cavalry? Catapult crew here. He's got some Dwarven Noblemen. Heavy infantry again. Iron Guard here. Dragon Slayers. Oh my God, those guys. Just... Super, one of their elite units the dwarves have got. Dwarves, dwarves have got. I can't get my words out today. What's going on, guys? Uh, Vault Wardens, Dragon Slayers at the back there again. Some Iron Guard, some really heavy infantry. And as I say, the position that he's put his units in is pretty formidable. Look at this pipe line here. Gee, God. Good luck, Orcs. You're going to need your cave trolls, I think. Anyway, let's play. Before we do play, let's click on this bit here because it looks like something's going to kick off eventually here maybe Dale Cavalry coming across by Trim Gibbon so let's go into normal normal speed here so he's bringing them across he's trying to drive the warg riders away maybe they're just trying to just scout the area see what the situation is I think Fluffalo knows that he wants to try and bring them back avoid any early confrontation if he can maybe Dale Cavalry just positioned themselves in the tree line here, just out of the line of sight of the Warg Riders maybe, just to, again, scout them. But hang on a second, here come the Warg Riders, they've got the advantage here, they've got the speed, they've got the terrain, they're going down the hill towards Dale Cavalry. Dale Cavalry realising this and then pulling away, realising that they, they won't be able to win that clash, the Warg Riders probably would uh, outmatch them, or even outnumber them, I should imagine, actually. They've got two units opposed to one. So, yes, it will definitely win the day there. Win an early clash in the day, I should say. So, yeah, here we go. Trim Gibbon bringing the forces frantically across. He's got to traverse the high mountains himself if he's going to join up with uh, Tempo over there. I'm going to call him Tempo for this one. So, yeah, Warg Riders positioned over there, protecting the other units that are getting across the terrain here, essentially giving the Warg Riders, giving them time and protecting them against the Dale Cavalry to then position themselves ready to push on to the Dwarven units, probably. And, of course, all his teammates are bringing their lines across, slowly but surely. So let's just fast forward a little bit here, just so we don't... Wait around for too long. Hang on a second, though. I could be mistaken. There could be a clash in a second here. May not be. No, they're pulling back. They're pulling back. So let's just go forward a little bit more. So close here. The Warg Riders. Hang on a second. Ah, they're going for a charge now. Here we go. The first clash of this battle has just kicked off. It's Dale Cavalry versus the Warg Riders. And a lovely move as well by Fluffalo. He's coming his second unit down the hill. And hitting those light cavalry again, pulling them away now, going for some cycle charges maybe, but he's taken the heavy cavalry away. The Dale cavalry will not like survive if they carried on there. They would take a lot of numbers, large battering if they carried on. So yes, 
Cycle charging from the Wag Riders, but they're then pulling away again. Nice move by Trim Gibbon there. You've got to bring his Dragon Slayers across to protect him if he needed to, but I think the Wag Riders have gone away. But the problem is, they're now coming under heavy fire from the Goblin Archers on that hillside there. They're going to try and get into the mix again with these Wag Riders in a way to sort of... That doesn't roll off the tongue, does it, for me? Wag Riders <laughs> with my R's. But anyway, the Dale Cavalry being brought back in, I suppose, to try and get the, the Wag Riders to protect them in a way because it, obviously Fluffalo won't want to incur too much friendly fire so that's a quite a nice move from Trim Gibbon however what's happening here is this is giving him time in a way the Dale Cavalry are sort of sacrificing themselves because it's giving the Dwarves time to get up the mountainside here and meet up with Tempo and um, sacrifice themselves for the common goal, essentially. That's what's happening with the Dale Cavalry here. They will not be forgotten. Look at these volleys of fire from the Goblin Archers. Firing down. Incurring a bit of friendly fire at the same time. But Orcs don't give a shite, do they? I mean, they will kill their own kind if it means victory at the end of the day. Well, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to them. You know. So why now change that? So they're just positioning themselves up for the second. Just getting the artillery moving forward, the ballista crew. But ha <laughs> ha! Hello! Looks like the dwarves have got their artillery into position now, just on the cliff side here. Just on this edge of this cliff, they're now positioning themselves ready to fire down. They've got a great sort of view and a great range that they can sort of amass or fire the troops, fire onto the troops I should say, because look at that shot then, that was superb. Another shot then, God, that is taking a few of them down in one, two shots. That's taken a large bulk of those heavy goblin infantry down, which needs to be done if the dwarves are going to have a chance of facing off against these high numbers. But yeah, nice sort of expanse of land that the dwarves have got to fire down upon. That's what I was trying to say before. Couldn't get my words out. Tell you what, I need to put my teeth back in today because I'm talking like an old chap who can't get his words out, I tell you. So, yeah, the heavy goblin infantry now have really got to try and make a move quickly. They've got to make their minds up. Are they going to try and go left or right? Because if they go right, they can try and pick off Trim Gibbon over there early on. Or are they going to try and join up here with the other armies? This, yes, this is Donuts over here. He's positioning himself to maybe get himself ready to go up that pathway there. But the problem is these Vault Wardens, that's the problem. They are really going to be the big decider between victory or defeat today, I think, for the Orcs. But either way, they're having a lot of time, the Dwarves here, to just pick away at the enemy with their catapult crew and their archer or their crossbowmen. But what I think probably the Orcs are trying to do here, because I don't know who wins this one. I've only seen a little bit of this battle beforehand, so we don't know who's going to actually win it. Um, but what could be happening here is Donuts and Fluffalo are going to basically come together. Come together, combine their forces, and if victory is going to come to them today, it means basically, I think, the only way they can do it is by overpowering the enemy because the defenders will hold their line for so long. If they're going to overwhelm them, it's got to be by numbers. So that's what they're probably going to try and do. Smash the lines in sheer strength of uh, numbers, as I say. But what's over happening over here? I've completely missed this little clash here. Is this over here? Where has it gone, actually? The line's over here. Right, so they're bringing the crew. This, this is actually, yeah, this is... Fluffalo as well, having he's actually engaged with the catapult crew of the dwarves over there, so he's picked them off before they could get up there. Unfortunately, Trim Gibbon has lost his catapult uh, power now. That's going to be a big blow because they were quite handy to start with. But the main force has managed to get up that hillside, and they are beginning to form up nicely with tempo. So this is going to culminate. In quite an epic clash at the end here. They're going to essentially, I would say, hit from two sides. Because they're going to have to go from this side up this sort of mountain pass that way. And then have the full attack down here. 
It's brewing up nicely here, guys. It's going to get pretty tasty in a second. So what they're doing here is they're bringing across the Goblin Archers. Nice move. They're going to try and take down the Vault Wardens here. They're going to have to do it, as I said to you, by mass, by numbers, but as well using the numbers that they've got of their um, artillery. Or not artillery, sorry, their archers. And getting their archers, smashing and firing upon the Vault Wardens, getting their large numbers of volleys across to try and you know, break them down that way. That could give them a good chance. The is very much in our favor. And these could be expendable in a way. You know, these Vault, um, the Vault Wardens, sorry, the Goblin Archers, because they're taking a lot of fire from the crossbowmen and the artillery crew. Oh my god, what a great shot there! By the Orc! Oh my god, the Orc! Catapults are now firing on, and the Vault Wardens have already taken a hard pounding in the centre there. They've lost a quite a substantial number of men there. Oh god! This is interesting. What are the Vault Wardens going to do here? Are they going to stand their ground or are they going to pull back? I would say pull back, go back to a higher level. But yeah, these could be expendable, these Goblin Archers, because really and truthfully, they're getting their fires off, they're getting their arrows off, I should say, but they're losing numbers as well. But at the end of the day, they could be like that. They are expendable units to get and allow the heavy infantry to buy them more time to bring them into the battle while taking a few of the enemy down at the same time, being a sort of meat shield in a way. And already, look at this, the Caliport crew have abandoned their equipment, quite surprisingly in fact. I thought it would have held in for much longer and would have sort of, I don't know, got a few more rounds off. They could have done, they had the high ground. But they're engaging the Goblin Archers to try and drive them away. Which is an interesting move. But the Orc crew are still continuing to batter down. On these Vault Wardens, are they now expendable? Are they? Are that is that line gone? It could be broken, in fact. Now forming up on this left-hand side as well, because the Orcs are coming up. If I'm correct, they're getting themselves yet yeah, ready over here. This is Brilli. This is Brilli 24 as well. It is Brilli 24. He's matching, or he's he's kind of combining up with a small force of Fluffalo's army, and they're going to try and go up this way. It's very, very interesting about what's going to happen here because the balance of power looks very much in the orcs favor it's going to be because they've got three armies against two but let's wait and see what happens when the forces forces do come together because the wars will come into their own at that point yeah i think they've realized here that they're going to have to abandon their position over here they're taking too much fire go further back maybe what they're going to do yet yeah, look at these vault 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 Wardens here, these are essentially now being sent to their deaths in a way. They're going to be going in to try and give their comrades a little bit more time while they try and take out some of these Goblin Heavy Infantry maybe. The Catapult Crew are going in. They're clashing. Even the Catapult Crew, the formidable fighters, they've got quite heavily armoured units at their disposal. So they're going to, you know, keep fighting for as long as they possibly can. They'll, they'll do themselves proud, even the catapult crew. But the problem is, look what's coming in behind the cave trolls. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, God. Wait till these guys come in. But to tell you what, the dwarves now are in a real tricky position. They've boxed, them, boxed themselves in. But here we go. This is where the cave trolls really can sort of make the difference now. Oh, God. They're flying up. Fantastic work. They're trying to get into the mix with these Vault Wardens here. They've only got 37 Dwarven units left. But yeah, they're in a right predicament now, the Dwarves, because they're really boxed in. They're at the red line. They're in the corner of the map. Backs to the walls. I'll tell you this one is, guys. Backs to the walls. How are we doing over here? Orcs still amassing, ready to move in. Look at these two units of uh, Warg Riders here. What are they going to be doing? God knows. But they've got to get themselves into formation quickly. Get themselves into lines where they can try and hold the Yorks off with. Because if they clump together, they could be outflanked. They've got to get the pikes down. They've got to get their shields ready to face the Yorks. If they're facing the other way or clumping together or trying to get into formation still, they'll be in trouble. Move in. This is what these Vault Wardens are doing. Giving these other Dwarves a bit more time. Distracting the enemy army. 
from uh, the job at hand to get up that hillside. But another unit of cave trolls are coming in here. Dear God, these vault wardens are going to literally not like survive for much longer. But look at this, they're taking a heavy pounding, but still there's 17 units left. However, the routing has begun, the morale has dropped, they realise that they, are, they can't hold on for much longer. They've pulled back, they're routing now. Has the situation improved up here? Had they got themselves into some solid lines of defence here? They're getting there. These guys definitely are. Trim Gibbon has got himself into more solid lines, I think. Where's he trying to go, actually? Let's just fast forward again here because we want to see how this one comes together in a second. Oh, yes, it's going to be good. I mean, okay, you think to yourself, God, they're going to be bringing in one unit of cave trolls in on their own. Yeah, because cave trolls are that bloody tough. They can go in on their own and still do horrendous amounts of damage. What are they going to do? Are they going to try and flank around the Vault Wardens here? Try and get at their right flank side here? Seems legitimate. They would try and do that instead of going head on. Oh, they brought the pikes up there. That's a terrible mistake. Oh, no. That's allowed the cave trolls to get into their units then without coming across and facing their pikes head on. They've gone into the mix now. But the pikes are down, so now could the cave trolls be under a little bit of trouble, trouble here? Yeah, they're starting to drop here, they're starting to drop. Trying to go across this other unit here. Are donuts going to be their victory tea or not? Who knows? We'll find out. Here's Tempo, bringing the Dragon Slayers into position. Love to see some Dragon Slayers face off against these cave trolls. That would be an epic encounter. So, yeah, they've made good progress now. Fluffalo is coming up with Brilli 24. The units are massing for a final assault here on the mountainside. The Orcs trying to drive these Dwarves away from their lands. But can the Dwarves hold on? God, even the catapult crew are in trouble here if they're not careful. This one sole cave troll unit here surviving that clash with the Vault Wardens. You're on your own, my friend. What can you do? Okay, come on. Get yourself into lines, Trim Gibbon. You've got to do that if you're going to win this battle today. Look at him, the Dragon Slayers are in now, they're all surrounding him. What's he got in the tank, Mr. Cave Troll? What have you got to give to these guys? You're very blooded. My bet you're going to fall very quickly here. Percentage of the enemy killed is 14 to the Allies. We're looking at it from the Orcs' perspective, so it's 14% kills to the Dwarves, 9% to the Orcs here. So the numbers still on their side. Dragon Slayer should be able to take this cave troll down. He's surrounded them. He's, they are, you know, he is surrounded. There he goes. He falls to his death. But the Vault Warden here still taking on this unit of cave trolls by... Is it Donuts here? Is it Donuts? Is it Donuts? Who is it? No, it's Brilli24. Bloody hell was that? I think it is Bloody hell. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Right, come on, chaps. Let's just get yourselves ready in. This is all sort of boiling, boiling up now to the grand finale here. They've gone very, very defensive. Very defensive indeed. They've only got now, really, a case of these lines here. This is... I think actually it. They've really boxed themselves in now. They've allowed the orcs to come across here and get into position. So they've all essentially come together now. All three orc armies are ready in position. Brilli, Fluffalo, and Donuts. So they've just got to get themselves essentially 
into formation now. And that's where we'll fast forward for a second. The lines are finally drawn. The dwarves are ready. It's come to this point on the Misty Mountain where the battle will really start to come together. Okay, we're just fast forwarding a little bit here. Just want to get some more action kicking off. It's just more of the archer fight at the moment. Skirmisher fight back and forth. Trying to take out some of these units on the line here. Try to break them down bit by bit. Grind them down, these dwarves. While the forces at the back here just get themselves ready into position. Okay, then finally getting... They must be absolutely exhausted. They are. They're exhausted, these troops are. They've done a very big mountain hike today. They've earned their donuts. Even if they lose, they earned their donuts today, I tell you. Hard work. Okay, so yes, yeah, it's quite good. They've obviously brought their archers forward. They're just doing the jobs they need to do. Picking away at the dwarves. And then the lines of heavy infantry are just massing now. And the catapult crew. They've taken quite a lot of losses already, the dwarves, actually. Their lines are thin. What the hell's going on here? What are they doing here? They're going to bring across a unit of iron crossbowmen. Fair enough. Get him into the mix. See if they can try and take some of these goblin archers down. Stop them firing in. Distract them for a little bit, maybe. Oh, great shot from the dwarven catapult crew there. Right into that unit of heavy goblin infantry. I think their time is, is come. They've got to move in now. They've got to start making a move, these orcs. Grow you know, grow the balls, grab the bollocks and go for it. Because, okay, these dwarves are dwindling in numbers. But still, still, they have to be taken down. And the only way you can do that is by marching full forward and full attack here. Okay, just a little bit more of a fast forward. Oh, it, hang on a second. Looks like the dwarves have thought, you know what? Let's put the pressure on the orcs. And they're bringing the dragon slayers in. They're bringing their iron guard forward. And they will completely and utterly annihilate these orc archers. Because they won't stand a chance. Maybe the heavy goblin archers will stand for a bit longer. But apart from that, not a chance. So this is when it's getting nice and tasty now, this battle. Surprised they've done this. Well, I'm actually, actually no, I'm not surprised. I'm quite impressed that the, the dwarves have done this. They've thought, you know what? Let's take it to them. Let's put the pressure on them. Let's get them to start moving and make some action or do something against the dwarves here and take out those archers because they were causing some big problems to the dwarven lines here. But now they're pushing out in pretty much a full-on force here, full charge forward. Great stuff. This is going to be superb. Because these heavy infantry, these iron guard, I mean, look at the armor. They are thick in plate here. They will fight and fight and fight. Even these heavy goblin infantry won't withstand the pressure from the iron guard. Not at all. And here come the cave trolls again, trying to put pressure on these infantry, trying to support their heavy goblin infantry uh, comrades here. This is only the re real way I think the difference could be made here. These cave trolls making their mark. That's the only real thing that I could think would cause the dwarves a massive amount of problems. It looks pretty good now. If you look at it from over here, the lines are drawn. It's looking impressive. I like it. On top of the mountainside. They're pulling back and they're not no, they're not routed. They're just pulling away. Probably realizing these dragon slayers are, you know, they mean business. You don't want to get into a fight with them. They're pulling away. And actually, this, out of nowhere, the dwarves seem to be going on a real offensive here. And the orcs are in trouble. Look at the balance of power. It's suddenly swung towards the dwarves here. This is incredible stuff. The defenders realizing, actually, let's get a bit aggressive here. There's a sweeping across the field. The orcs are absolutely in chaos. Thinking to themselves, what the hell do we do here? Is this a tactical retreat from the Orcs, though? Are they thinking, well, let's pull back to a lower part of the ground here 
and then just stand again. But this is pretty impressive. Tempo and trim given here. Really pushing on. This has been nicely executed. Look at that like cave troll there swinging away. Come back here, Dragon Slayers. I'm finished with you. But these are these are on the run. These are going too quickly. Oh, here goes. It's going to be a good clash. This is what I wanted to see. Dragon Slayers versus Cave Trolls. Oh my god. Great shot there. Kicking away. Dwarves flying up. Just volley from the catapult crew there. Dear God, yeah, this is interesting. This is really evenly matched now. Dwarven noblemen, they're committing themselves to the fight now. Well, I think it's pretty much 50-50, actually, guys. I mean, okay, what the Goblin Infantry done here? Donuts has positioned himself. He's got himself caught up, though. The, the artillery crew are going to be in trouble. Billy24 is probably going to lose his artillery crew here. But the lines of Goblin Heavy Infantry are drawn... They're going to have to stand their ground now. Because here comes the heavy dwarves. Pushing in. I told you this battle could get really nice and tasty. And it has done very quickly. And lovely push from these dwarves. Vault Warden's pushing in now. Finishing off these cave trolls. Potentially. But over here, this is where the, the real battle's kicking off. We've got a few lines back here. Still got heavy goblin archers at the back here. Heavy infantry as well are exhausted. They're shaken. Again, this could have been a big thing that played into the dwarves' favour here. The terrain. The orcs are shattered. They're absolutely exhausted before they've even fought and swung the sword. Dwarves aren't as much. You know, they are winded, but they're not exhausted. Some are fresh, in fact. That's the difference here, guys. That is the difference. Cave Trolls hanging on there. Three units left of this, this unit over here. It's back and forth. The balance of power is going back towards the Dwarves. So the Orcs now. And they've got their... They've finally got themselves into a good position here, the Orcs. They've got their archers at the back firing down. They've got the Heavy Goblin infantry at the front here. They're clashing with the Dragon Slayers over there. The Wild Riders have fallen. They are... Facing the ground dead. The cave trolls now swinging away. They've got themselves nice and warmed up for this battle. What they're doing now, the dwarves, is they're bringing the rest of the forces forward. The vault wardens, the noblemen, they have got to get into the mix quickly. They have got to get their pikes in to try and poke at those cave trolls. Get them in, run them in if you need to. I know you're exhausted, but God, your teammates, your comrades need you. Because these iron guards can only stand for long, so for so long. The catapults have been abandoned. I love how they're just in the middle there. Get out of the way, catapults! You're just nothing but a bloody nuisance now. The dragon slayers are really well. Yeah, I mean, how many? That's 69. 69. <laughs> a lucky number. All right, and you know, <laughs> this is where the Dragon Slayers have to hold. They have to do a very strong job. Another unit of Dragon Slayers coming in now. Putting pressure on these cave trolls. Music in the background, wonderful. Keeping in ambience with Lord of the Rings here. The Axemen of Erebor. Well, what are you going to do, chaps? Because I would say go straight for those units of Goblin Infantry there. If you can, finish off these, yeah, and then go for these Goblin Archers, sorry, over here, and these Goblin Infantry. Try and get round the side there. Oh, here come the Vault Wardens now. What's the ter what terms of balance of power here? Enemy killed 42%, 37 for the Orcs, 43 for the Dwarves here. Oh, God, but still very evenly matched here, the balance of power is. I would say if the Dwarves manage to take out a lot of the heavy infantry of the Orcs here, they would then stand a better chance because these Archer units won't really hold for long. And that's what seems to be happening now. They're getting behind the front lines of Dwarves here of Tempo and he's getting in to these Orcs now. These Goblin Halberds will hold though, but if he can get just a little bit further back, he's going to then face the Goblin Archers where he will, or the Dwarves will, stand a better chance 
in the end. Look at this. This is when maybe the Orcs are getting a little bit desperate. They're bringing the Goblin Archers in to fight as well. They're bringing every single person they can or every single beast. They're not men. They're beasts. They're coming forward now to try and reinforce the lines and help stop these Dwarves from putting this massive pressure on that they're doing at the moment. And I like it now. The Halberds have got their pikes down. They're being a little bit more defensive now. Lovely. Look at this. Cave Troll coming in. Bang! Oh! Who was that? I think it was one of the Dwarven Generals has gone. Charge from those Warg Riders has done nasty work. And I think it's taken one of the Dwarven Generals down. That won't help morale at all now if that gets around the lines here. If they get news of this, if they get wind of this information, the Dwarves may drop and may lose faith here. Very effective charge from those Wag Riders. Where are they, in fact? I don't see the, any of them were left, actually. Are they over here? Where the hell are they, those Wag Riders? Oh, they're there! Oh, God, he's brought his units across and got behind the units here, has he? Wow. I think he thought his general was quite safe at the back there. I think it was tempo, but it's not. They were taken down. Really meaty affair now, though. Look at that dwarf there. He's really seen a lot of battle today. He's bloodied and he's actually fallen to his knees. Just as I said that, and a great shot from that unit of catapults of the dwarves there. They've gone and hit him. Hit him? Hit it! Donuts there. The heavy goblin infantry taking a pound in them. This is an amazing sight to see, isn't it? Look at this on the top of the mountainside here. This, this actually deserves. It deserves a screenshot, guys. It deserves a screenshot. Let's get one. There we go. F12, that one. Pike on pike down here. On top of the mountain. Literally on the, literally on the mountain's edge there. Don't look behind you, guys, because you're facing a little bit of a drop there. <laughs> Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, right, okay. Pressure's on now for the Dwarves. Pressure is mounting and it's getting quicker and quicker. Oh, look at this unit of Iron Crossbowmen. They've managed to get in behind. They're trying to face off against these Halberds. I don't think they'll come off well, though. I think the Halberds will have the upper hand there. Locking down his line here. It's just literally one line against another line here. Look at these Vault Wardens coming in now. The final roll of the dice. But either way, it's well played in the end. It's really come to together this battle did beautifully. But the problem is now that the, the Dwarves, even though they're putting on such a great fight and they're coming, you know, really trying to come out and attack the Orcs here, they also got too much. And I tell you what, the catapult crew of the Dwarves have been on fire today, literally on fire. Pardon the pun, but they have. They've been doing some great shots. But look at this, as I say, the Orcs, yeah, they, they are taking a battering and taking a lot of uh, kills. The Wars are, you know, really taking it to them. But the problem is the Orcs have got so many reinforcements coming in. Another line of reinforcements now aiding the Orcs to, to smash the Dwarves down. I think the Dwarves are, have got, haven't got enough, really, if I'm honest. The Orcs are going to be too powerful in the end. I love it, though. I love these. This just for me, sums up the Dwarves. They're fighting to the death. These guys are the bravest of the brave. They will not go down fleeing. They will not run as cowards. They will fight to the bitter end. And that's what I love about this mechanic, really, on, on Medieval 2, of course, this mod for Third Age. I love it. You know, the fact that units would fight to the death. I want that to come back in Warhammer, if I'm, if I'm honest. I think it may do. I don't know. There's talk of it. Can't confirm it yet. Only half our force oh right, okay. Half the force of the enemy of the orcs remain, but the problem is, 79% of the dwarves have been taken down, and that's the difference here. Yeah. 
Oh, there goes the other Dwarven General. Oh, Lord. This is where the problems now occur because the morale will be just falling to the floor. Both Dwarven Generals have fallen. The heads are being thrown around the battlefield now in a message to the enemy and to the enemy to say we have taken down your commanders flee if you've got anything left of you save yourselves because we will kill you if not that's what the orcs are saying now these noblemen though these noble dwarfmen dwarfmen these noble dwarfs they will not fall they will fight on to avenge the death of their generals they won't flee just make them tougher, make them angrier. Draw these oh look at the dragon so the of Erebor, they have thought otherwise. They think they're gonna save themselves. They're fleeing for their lives. Dragon slayers though, they have not. They are carrying on. But the halberds now really gain the upper hand again. It was so amazing how it suddenly flipped from the orcs being the attackers to them being the defenders. The orcs pushing on, sorry, the dwarves pushing on so aggressively and now it's flipped back to the orcs being the aggressor again and the dwarves being on the back foot. We're entering the final few moments now and the balance of power is very very quickly now swapping over to the orcs again and the dwarves they're fleeing now I think their numbers are too little. The news has spread of the Dwarven generals being killed. It's, look at that though, my, that, that, that unit there fighting to the death. That one single unit fighting on. Are you a Dragon Slayer? Oh god. It brings a tear to the eye how brave they are, but he's falling eventually. But yeah, numbers are dwindling, morale is dropping, and the Orcs finally have got the victory here. Finally, played out very well. I think if the dwarves had pulled back to this point to start with, they may have had a better chance because it did come under a lot of heavy fire early on. These vault wardens here taking a battery. Look at the dead, dead linger, and that was where they lost a few vital numbers. They were already up against it with the numbers in the first place. They outnumbered with another army, but. If they brought them back a little bit further, maybe. But it's still so hard because, you know, you're going to be coming under heavy fire no matter what position you're under, or on, I should say, in the map. I think when they became the aggressor and they realised that, it was quite an effective move. If they'd done that earlier, maybe, maybe they could have come the victor here because they had the terrain advantages there. If they'd gone and charged down to them over here, the Orcs would have been instantly pinned down fighting uphill. So as I say, these factors could have really played into the hands. But this is it, guys. The final few Dwarven units are fighting on. Brave bastards that they are. But it's too much. I love it. I just love their, their courage. Their courage will be remembered today. The caverns of the Dwarven holds will remember these heroes for many years to come. Their forefathers will always talk of this day. <laughs> right, here we go. Yeah, I think you can see the counter at the top. Well played to both factions, or both play of both factions and all sets of players. There we go. It, it was. A lovely clash in the end. I loved how it came together on this hillside here. Or mountainside. I keep saying hillside. It's a bloody mountain. It's a misty mountain for God's sake. Yeah, I love how it all came together in the end. It did provide a very epic and beautiful spectacle for you all to enjoy. And that's what I'm loving about these replays. The epicness of them. And it's getting you guys involved in the channel a lot more. So there we go. A clear victory in the end. But... I don't know, I didn't think that really did t tell the full story. I think the Dwarves did better than that. I think just the numbers that the Orcs had was too much in the end, ultimately. But the Dwarves did themselves a lot of credit. So let's have a quick look at the statistics. We only look at them from the Orcs side of things, but we can still see how they did. Best performing units for, I think this is Fuffalo, yes it is. Who was the best unit there? It was a unit of heavy goblin halberds. Down here we've got the 
donuts. His best unit was catapult crew, 142. I think those initial shots early on in the in the battle did definitely play into his favour. That's why I was saying, you know, dwarves pulling back early on may have helped a little bit there. And um, for it, really, it was a unit of yeah, this unit of cave trolls. Yeah, they did eventually do the job. For the orcs down but there you go ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching it's great to be you know doing these sort of battles now so as i say definitely if you've got any epic clashes like this on third age on 12 12 ad and um, what else call of warhammer then get them over to me i'd love to showcase them for you link below as i say in the description to my email address but yeah thank you so much for watching guys but until next time this is what is what for now saying Farewell.